So this section is about linear independence and we are talking about a collection of vectors and determining whether that collection is linearly independent or if it's linear if the set of vectors is linearly dependent determining the dependence relation. The definition of linear independence um, applies to a set of vectors. So we have a set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2 up through v sub k and that set is linearly independent if and only if the vector equation um, has where where we're, say, we're saying that the scalar x sub 1 times the vector v sub 1 plus the scalar x sub 2 times the vector v sub 2 uh, right these are vectors and the x sub 1s are the x sub i's are scalars, right, is equal to the zero vector. And if the only possible solution to that is the trivial solution, then they're linearly independent. What's the trivial solution? The trivial solution is where all of the x sub i's, all of the scalars are equal to zero, right? So it makes sense that if I set x sub one equal to zero and x sub two equal to zero and every other x sub something equal to zero, then of course that's just going to crush all the vectors down into into zeros right those scalar multiples will just be a bunch of zero vectors added together and of course that will be the zero vector that's what we're calling the trivial solution okay and if the only solution that's possible to this is the trivial solution then the set of vectors is linearly independent it's the exact same thing as solving the homogeneous equation and seeing if that matrix equation has only the trivial solution. Why? Well, because I can treat the vector v sub 1 as the first column of A and the vector v sub 2 as the second column of A and so forth. And v sub k is the kth column of A. And, and then I have a very simple test. I can use row reduction to tell, right? If A has a pivot position in every column, then I know the set of vectors are linearly independent, all right? I guess here is linearly independent. If the only possible solution is the trivial solution, we have linear independence. If there's some other solution, right? If we have a free variable, then there'll be some other solution to the homogeneous equations, right? And then, we'll actually be able to solve and find a dependence relation, which they're talking about here, right? We can solve if we have some other non-zero, right? So I have some, some value for the x's, right? There's some x sub one, x sub two, up through x sub k, where at least one of the x sub, x sub i's is non-zero. Then that'll be a linear dependence relation for one of the variables written as a linear combination of the others. We're asking ourselves the question here um, about these four example vectors. We're saying, is the set of vectors represented by the columns of A linearly independent? Okay, so this think of this as a set of vectors, you know, where this is the vector V1, the first column is vector V1, and then V2, and then V3. So, so thinking of it that way, Right? Is the set of vectors linearly independent? And if not, find a linear dependence relation. So that's the question we're asking. Here's matrix A, here's our first example. And let's row reduce it by hand. Let's actually think about what uh, row operations we'd need. And we need uh, row three of A equals row three plus row one. And notice that based on the theorem we were just looking at, we know the answer to whether or not these are linearly independent after just one row reduction step. Why? Because we're in REF and we have three pivots. Three pivots means that every column has a pivot in it. If every column has a pivot in it, then the only possible solution to the homogeneous equation is the trivial solution. So what are we saying? We're saying that if I look at the homogeneous set of equations, the matrix equations, A times the vector X equals the zero vector, and I try to find solutions for that, if the only possible solution that makes the homogeneous equation true is to plug in the zero vector for X, if that's the only possible thing, then they're linearly independent. Well, 
if you think about it, with the pivots in each column, right? How could I write? Um, so the question is, let's think about it this way, right? If I, um, if they're dependent, let's say the third vector is dependent on the first two, then I should be able to solve the augmented matrix. And with the solution, right, I'd get a solution vector um, when I row reduce this, um, that would allow me to, um, to write the third vector as a linear combination of the first two. Well, the problem with that is I know that that third row will be inconsistent, right? There's no consistent uh, row reduced augmented matrix for A uh, that will allow me to find a non-trivial solution. So then the only possible solution is that is the trivial one. So, so the answer for A is that they're linearly independent, right? The answer here, are they linearly independent was yes. All right, so let's do uh, let's do B. Okay, same thing. We're going to uh, row reduce B, um, and so let me do little b equals big B. Pro tip on that, right? Always row reduce with um, an easy letter to do. And so uh, first things first with row two. Row two needs to equal row two. Uh, minus four, sorry, minus four times row one of B. And then we'll need row three. Let me just copy paste here and change this. Row three will need to be row three plus row four, I believe. Let's take a look at that. Uh, plus row one, sorry. Uh, that looks like that'll work. Okay. And, and so now what are we saying? Well, we only have two pivots. There's no pivot in the third column. What does this mean? Well, it means there's a free variable. And since there's a free variable, there is a linear dependence relation I can write the, uh, that will produce the third vector in terms of the first two. Um, or the vector that corresponds to the free variable can be written as a linear combination of the basic variables. Okay, well, uh, let's do that, but it's going to be easier if we continue row reducing. So if I'm trying to row reduce and get a zero above the four, then what I'll need to do is multiply row two times one and a half. Sorry, B. I need to multiply one and a half uh, times B2 and add it to B1. And then here's the cool thing. This is my linear dependence relation right here. And let's test that. Okay, so I just went ahead and created the vector B1, which is the first column of B. I'm sorry, I did that incorrectly. I need to create this as the, um, I created the row, I need the column, right? So this will be the colon and the column, that's row one, excuse me, column one, and this would be column two. Sorry, let me re-execute that. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone back to the original matrix, right? I've created this vector B1 and this vector B2, and you can see them here, right? We do have them correct. Um, and so now the point is, once we know what they're equal to, can we write a, uh, can we verify this linear dependence relation? that if we take 0.5 times B1 and then add three times B2 to it, will I get the vector B3? That's the question. And so let's try it. Let's do um, 0.5 times B1. Um, sorry, not three times. It's um, I have to solve this equation, right? I guess I was leaving something out here, right? Um, we know that x sub 2 here, if we solved it, um, would be um, 3 fourths, right? Minus 3 fourths times x sub 3. Um, so, and and that's just, you know, if we were to do RREF, uh, and get a one in that pivot position, right? We're going to get the um, 
this will be when I move it over to the other side, right? This will be uh, minus 0.5. Um, well, I mean, I guess either one will work. I just have to have the opposite sign. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm doing 0.5 times V1, and then I'm adding uh, 0.75 times B2. And when I do that, I've got the wrong thing. Hang on just a second. Let me get this right. Oh, uh, one of them had to be negative, right? I could either put the minus sign here and it'll work, right? And get the minus four, minus 13, uh, four. Or I believe it'll work if I do it this way. I'll get the opposite. That's right. Um, so let's look at which one's correct. This is certainly the right vector, but all the wrong signs. So what's going on here? Well, remember, we're thinking about this matrix here as an augmented matrix, right? So I have this equals this. Um, so, so I need a minus, right? When I move, this is already on the right side. This is already on the right-hand side of the equation because the equal sign is right here on the augmentation bar, right? So I know here that um, x sub one equals uh, minus one half, right? And then x sub two is going to be equal to positive three fourths. Right, so what's the correct, this is this is what I create the linear dependence relation from. All right, so when I come down here, what's the linear dependence relation? Well, it's minus one half B1 plus three fourths times B2. And then I do in fact get the exact vector uh, B3. We're asking the same question now about C. Is there a, is the set of vectors represented by these four vectors? Is it a linearly independent set of vectors, or is there a linear dependence relation that would allow me to write one of them in terms of the others? Now, if I'm going to row reduce this by hand, digitally by hand, what I want is I want to put row four first. And then notice that either this row, either the first or the third row starts with two zeros. So I'd kind of like this third row to stay where it's at. Um, or I'd like the first row to be here. Either way would be fine. So let me show you how to accomplish this, right? If I need to do multiple row swaps at once, what I do is I put one, two, three, four in that order in the brackets in the first on the left-hand side. And then I write the order that I want them to be in. So here, um, I want the two to be first, the row with the two leading two to be first. And then I want um, row two to be next, and then row three, and then row one. And I know that I didn't change all of them, but all I have to do, you know, is specify an order here, how I'd like them rearranged. And you'll notice that row four is first, that had the two, and row two is second. It didn't change positions, the four is still there. The three, row three is still where it was. The only thing that actually changed positions was row four and row one, but I just wanted to, you know, make it clear that I could do, um, you know, a lot of things with this, um, you know, like say where this is one and three, I know that this would change a couple of rows, but the two would stay where it was. Um, and anyway, this is a way to change all the, do all the row changes, row, row swaps at one. and Let's just take a look at RREFC um, and notice that, oh wait, this is from before, don't, don't look at this, um, and see that it has four pivots, right? One more row operation, you can see the row operation here um, that we need to do uh, is obviously going to have four pivots. So, so the vectors for row C are linearly independent, all right? pivot in every column, so independent. For the example D, asking the same question if they're D and if, if the columns of D are linearly independent, um, if that vector is a linear independent set, um, let's just row reduce D. Interesting, all right, so now what do we know? Well, we know that um, if we're trying to figure out, right, re well, we're thinking of this as what if I created an augmented matrix and can I write this vector as a linear combination of the first three? And the answer is yes, we have a, we have a non-trivial solution. 
And so that means that that this, in fact, is the linear dependence relation. What do I mean by that? Well, let's let's define these other um, Let's define D1 and D2. So I'm going to, D1 is the vector where it's the first column of D, right? And so, yeah, I'm just grabbing this vector here and calling it D1, right? And then uh, D2 equals um, two, and then D, sorry, D3 equals uh, the capital D colon. Okay, so I've got these, right? Um, and you can verify um, that I have exactly what I need. And let me do this. You can kind of see, you can see the two of them and then the 22, 15, 1, and 3, negative 22, 15, 1, and 3. So I do have them, okay? So let me put semicolons after them to hide their output so we can see these things. And all I want to do is just check this linear dependence relation that we had from here, right, which I can do. So what do I need? I need minus D1, right? That's the first part, right? I have minus D1 plus four thirds times D2, sorry, times D2 plus D3. And when I do that, I get minus 16, minus 9, 1, and 11, which you'll see is exactly this. So I have a linear dependence relation. This solution, thinking of it as the right-hand side of the augmentation bar, the solution set that I get is the linear dependence relation that will produce uh, the fourth vector as a linear combination of the first three. Now, the only thing you have to realize is that sometimes I have to choose a different vector to be the fourth vector. Sometimes I have to rearrange the columns of D because it's not true that I can always write any vector in a linearly dependent set as a linear combination of the others. Um, it's only true that there is a vector in the collection that I can write as a linear combination of the others. And your textbook says this in a warning, right? That if I have a linearly dependent set, it's not generally true that any vector can be written in um, as a linear combination of the other, or that any vector is in the span of the others. It's just that at least one of them is. Now, there are a couple of things that we should note um, about this concept of linear independent. So your book brings um, the same theorem that it was doing before, but talks about um, what happens when we have a linearly dependent set. Um, so they say that we can delete the columns of A without pivots, right? Those are the columns corresponding to the free variables without changing the span of the set of vectors, which means that any of the free variable, any of the vectors corresponding to free variables can be written as linear combinations of the ones with basic variables. Um, so, so if you're thinking about a, a set of vectors, um, you just delete all the ones that don't correspond to pivots, and then you're left with something that still spans the same thing as before. All right, the final thing that we want to talk about, they mention the pivot columns and dimension. Well, if I have one pivot, then the span of the vectors is a line in whatever space I'm in, whether I'm in R2, whether I'm in R4, whether I'm in R9, if I have one pivot, the span of the set of vectors is a line. If I have two pivots, the span is a plane. If I have three pivots, then the span is a three space and so forth. And that number D, which corresponds to the number of pivots in row reduced echelon form is called the dimension. So that's a quick, um, overview of how we test for linear independence.